Now, Mr. Nigel Farage, the Europe of Freedom and Democracy. Thank you. Well, it's all terribly simple, really, isn't it? We've had one vote against the treaty in Ireland and one vote for the treaty in Ireland. So if we've got any sort of sporting um, sense, we ought to make this the best of three. But the difference is that with the third referendum, let's make it a free and a fair referendum. Because what has happened in Ireland most certainly is not that. In fact, I hope you're all very proud of yourselves. Because what you've done is you've taken the littlest boy in the playground, got him into the corner and given him a good kicking. This is a victory for the bully boys. It's a victory for big money and it's a victory for bureaucrats. The whole thing was a travesty. Oh, so you, so you, respect, you respect this vote, do you? You didn't respect the last vote, did you? The European Commission poured in millions of pounds of taxpayers' money to back, to back, well, pounds, euros, it doesn't matter. But it does in our case, because we've still got the pound, thank God. But you poured in millions, something like a factor of between 10 and 20 to 1, was the outspending of the yes side to the no side. The Referendum Commission in Ireland didn't do their job, didn't tell the Irish people that, of course, the Lisbon Constitutional Treaty has profound, profound impacts upon their own constitution. And perhaps worst of all, the Broadcasting Commission in Ireland changed the rules so there wasn't equal coverage for the yes and the no side. The whole thing's an outrage. But what they did campaign on, what you all campaigned on was vote yes for jobs. That's what it was all about. Well, hot off the press, folks. Aer Lingus have laid people off today. And Intel, the people who put €400,000 into the yes campaign, have laid off 300 people today. 1,550 jobs have gone since Saturday. The only jobs that were preserved by the yes vote were the jobs of the political class. I suspect that it's all over. I suspect that for Ireland, their period of independence will be a very brief one in their history. I don't think that President Klaus will be able to hold out. I hope that he does. He's a fine and brave man. But it looks like we've got the victory of bureaucracy over national democracy. In historical terms, I think Britain now finds herself very alone, perhaps as she was back in 1940. But there is a real debate. There is a real debate. There's a real debate here. What is the point of having a Conservative Prime Minister if Mr Blair becomes the overlord? What's the point of a Foreign Secretary if we've got an EU Foreign Secretary with his own diplomatic service? What is the point of any of it? As far as I'm concerned, this Irish referendum begins the real debate. There's no more pretending. If you want national democracy, you cannot remain a member of this European Union. And we will campaign for Britain to leave and to leave Danny as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nigel Farage. Uh, Mr. Andrew Henry William Bronze. None attached. Yesterday I asked Mrs. Wallström, the Vice President of the Commission, whether the Lisbon Treaty was essentially the same as the Constitutional Treaty that it replaced. She said the changes were those required by the British Government and they involved changes in names and symbols. She didn't use the word only, but she might easily have done. The Constitutional Treaty had already been rejected by the electorates of France and the Netherlands and the United Kingdom was due to hold its referendum, and it would certainly have resulted in a rejection. It's clear that the replacement of the Constitutional Treaty by the European Reform Treaty was carried out at the request of the British Government to enable them to renege on their pledge to hold a referendum. The substance would remain the same, but the names and symbols would be changed as part of a thoroughly dishonest claim that the treaties were different and a referendum would not be necessary. How can anybody dare to call this trickery and this dishonesty any kind of democracy? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now I would like to ask Mr. Prime Minister Frederick Reinfeldt, President in Office of the European Council, for your remarks. As far as I know, you wanted to say a few words until this topic, please. Well, um, first of all, dear group leaders, I uh, 